After Lil' Kim would become one of the most revolutionary voices in the world of hip hop, debuting in the 1990s with songs like No Time, Big Mama Thang, while continuing to make music to this very day. After Lil' Kim would be arrested and convicted of perjury and conspiracy for lying to a federal grand jury, and was sentenced to spend a year in prison. She's been away for a while, but tonight she's back. After Lil' Kim would have over 269,000 subscribers on YouTube, over 2 million followers on Twitter, and over 3 million followers on Instagram at the time of this recording. Notorious for her sexually explicit lyrics and her willingness to show plenty of skin, Lil' Kim first shot to fame in the latter half of the 90s with a spike healed and gangster ferocity that hid behind it a conflicted and vulnerable young woman. The product of a broken home as a teenager, Kim had to endure a violent and contentious relationship with her father, which had her running away from home in search of something better. She was eventually discovered by Christopher Wallace, better known as the Notorious B.I.G., who soon became her lover and turned her into a hip hop star before his murder in 1997. Kim was devastated by Biggie's death, but she didn't give up and managed to transform herself from a star into an icon. Icon, creating one of the most successful careers in hip hop of all time. Tonight, the I Am Hip Hop recipient is a woman who rose from the concrete jungles of Bed Stuy to become the queen bee of the game. Lil' Kim is the definition of a boss. Since a brief run-in with the law in the middle of the aughts, Lil' Kim has continued to make music while also transforming herself into a reality TV star and starring her own family with her six-year-old daughter, Royal Rain, who one day might just be as big of a star as a mom. What's poppin' guys, your boy Marlon Palmer back at it again with a brand new video. This one taking a look at the recent past of rap icon, Lil' Kim. This OG has been one of the biggest names in the game for decades now, ever since the release of her debut album, Hardcore, and today I'm gonna to be taking a look back at her past while also catching you up to date with her more recent developments. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at ThatDoomandFly, let me know what you think, and let's get into the story. Lil' Kim was born Kimberly Denise Jones on July 11th, 1974 in Brooklyn, New York. Her traumatic backstory as a youth played a large role in the persona she would develop over the course of her career. After her parents divorced, Kim moved with mom to New Rochelle and began a period of homelessness. Due to those constant financial struggles, Kim would eventually return to live with her dad in Brooklyn, who was a former member of the military. He ran a strict household, but still spoiled his daughter buying her Gucci threads that would make her the envy of her classmates. Still, she and her dad argued constantly. In fact, it once got so bad that Kim stabbed him in the shoulder with a pair of scissors. And what did you do that pissed him off the most? I think it was thing. when I was 13 and I wanted to have a boyfriend. He called me a bitch and that was it. You know how we get. I mean, especially your father calling you a bitch. It's like, what? So Kim eventually left again, this time on her own. She'd couch surf at friends' homes and transport drugs for dealers to make some money on the side. But everything would change for her when she first met Biggie on Fulton Street and impressed him with her rapping ability. He swept her off her feet, serving as her mentor and lover from that point forward. Biggie was the type of person to motivate you. He always wanted you, to, anyone, to succeed. He always wanted everybody to have a better life for themselves. Around this time, she ran with Junior Mafia, the 9D Brooklyn crew assembled by Biggie, and the first song she ever appeared on was 1995's Player Anthem. When that song was released, she was still only 17 years old, but no one could question her talent or ability. Over the years, a lot of people have wondered how much of Kim's persona was her own and how much was Biggie's invention. And while he undoubtedly had a hand in developing her look and sound, the simple truth of the matter is, if Kim didn't have remarkable talent to begin with, she would have never gone anywhere. Biggie's biggest contribution, if you'll pardon the pun, was that he instructed Kim to reshape the tone of her voice. At first, she rapped with a lot of bass, but after hearing how she changed her sound for the track, Backstabbers, Biggie told her softening her voice was going to be her golden ticket. And he was right. Despite being in a relationship with Biggie, Lil' Kim was never the woman he was going to end up with. She had to watch from the side as he instead married Faith Evans and dated Charlie Baltimore. When she became pregnant with Biggie's kid while recording her debut album, Hardcore, instead of having the child, she got an abortion. Considering everything she was going through, not to mention where she came from, it shouldn't be a surprise to learn that her early music was extremely dark and dealt with a lot of drugs and death. In fact, she eventually had to take a step back and take a break from recording altogether because things were just getting too dark. While Kim might have been losing control of some aspects of her life, she battled back by crafting her own image as a designer black Barbie, thanks in large part to two young ladies by the name of Dion Alexander and Misa Hilton, and displayed a willingness to wear damn near anything to stand out. You know what I want to do with my clothing line? I want to do the outfits that everyone knows me for. Like I want to duplicate the MTV, I want to duplicate the pink outfit I wore from VH1 uh, dinner. 
I want to duplicate a lot of things that I wore and let people feel glamorous, you know, like they were me, you know, at that point. God bless Misa and Dion. God bless the both of them. Pioneers. Am I right? This fashion forward style only further built up her own reputation and legend in the industry and by the time her mentor and partner Biggie died in 1997, she was heartbroken but still able to carry on without him. Biggie was everything to me at that time and there was a lot of things that I told myself when he was alive. I wouldn't be able to make it without him or I couldn't live without him and God showed me like, hell yeah, watch this. And he wanted to let me know that I was a strong young woman and I could do it. Her next album is The Notorious Kim and LaBelle Mafia both went platinum. Furthermore, her image influenced an entire generation of female rappers. We're talking the likes of Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, Meg Thee Stallion, all of whom who have paid their respects at the altar of Kim. Well, the type of things that she used to say, I, I used to be into, like, I always used to like the slutty talk. Like, yeah, wow, this is so cool. In March of 2001, she joined forces with Christina Aguilera, Pink, and Maya for the remake to Patti LaBelle's song Lady Marmalade for the Moulin Rouge soundtrack, which was so hugely popular that it held the number one spot on Billboard 100 chart for five straight weeks. When it won a Grammy Award for Best Pop Collaboration, Kim was now firmly established as one of the most sought after rappers ever. Then later that year, a wrinkle entered the fold. After Kim gave a radio interview at Hot 97 in Manhattan, a man was shot and critically wounded outside of the building. According to reports, the assailants were Kim's entourage, and when the case went to trial, Kim told the grand jury that she had no knowledge that members of her inner circle had been present at the time. The problem is, the radio station's security footage would prove otherwise when it showed Kim and the men charged with the crime outside of the building. Gutta is on some, yo, what up? You got problems with Kim? Stop busting their guns. As a result, Kim was convicted of perjury and conspiracy for lying to a federal grand jury in March of 2005. Before her sentencing, Kim said, at the time I thought lying was the right thing to do, but now I know it was wrong. She was fined $50,000 and sentenced to spend a year in jail. While she was in prison, her fourth album, The Naked Truth, was released, which might help explain why it was the first one of her records not to go platinum. After debuting near the top of the Billboard charts, it was off the list completely within eight weeks. Despite its relatively poor sales, critics actually adored the album, and some even called it the greatest album of all time by a female rapper. After serving 366 days in jail, Lil' Kim was released from prison and struggled after the fact to get her career back on track. In 2008, she left her longtime label of Atlantic Records with the intention of going independent. That same year, she dropped some mixtapes like Miss Goat, which again was critically well received, but failed to gain much public attention. So, Kim tried new avenues to succeed. She became a reality TV star with the series Pussycat Dolls Presents Girlicious and also competed on a Dancing with the Stars where she became such a fan favorite, people audibly booed when she was eliminated. Lil Kim and Derek. Well, not a happy audience here to see either of you go, Lil Kim, Derek. By 2011, she was enduring a minor feud with Nicki Minaj and dropped her Black Friday mixtape that depicted a decapitated Nicki on the cover. She'd released two more mixtapes, Hardcore 2K14 and Lil' Kim Season in 2016, before finally releasing her fifth studio album, Nine, in October of 2019, after over 14 years without a full-fledged album. That same year, Kim found herself honored by BET with the I Am Hip Hop Award, and her performance that night saw her performing a medley of her previous hit songs and reminding us all just how talented she's always been. Since then, Kim has teased a new album that's supposed to be forthcoming and produced by none other than Toronto's very own Tory Lanez. But considering that man's own recent legal problems, that project might not come to pass and everyone has been mum on it since Kim initially teased it over a year ago. She's also teamed up with UK-based fashion retailer Pretty Little Thing to launch a new collection of eye-catching and on-brand sexy pieces, including animal print skirts with ultra-high slits, plunging bodysuits, and barely there mesh tops. We love a good barely there mesh top, am I right? Eh? Eh? Further establishing herself in the world of television, she also executive produced a brand new reality TV show on VH1 titled Girls Cruise that followed her and friends on a 10 day cruise in the Caribbean. What's better, man? What I gotta do? The queen can always help me cook, man. Yeah. You know I love a man that can cook. That's the key to a queen's heart. <laughs> Finally, but perhaps most importantly, after giving birth to her daughter Royal in 2014, Kim has suggested that her six-year-old might one day decide to follow her mom and join the music industry. Kim has been homeschooling her daughter through the pandemic, but is already convinced that her daughter is destined to become a super superstar. She has since said that if her daughter ever came to her with plans to become a rapper, then Kim would throw her entire support behind her to accomplish her dreams. I wanted to let you know that I'm little Kim's daughter, and, and everything 
I'm in the car because we're going home. But make sure you keep streaming my mom's number one and, uh, and the song. And, and song. As for the rest of her story, well, I think we'll end this video here. After all, you're now all caught up with the recent past of Little Kim. What'd you guys think? Be sure to let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to follow our series on Instagram at Before They're Famous, where you can let us know who you'd like to see next, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.